Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. Two former bank employees charged with stealing hundreds of thousand dollars in cash from Royal Bank of Canada. The Bahamas Hotel Union takes the first step in industrial action. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. As the search continues for 34-year-old pilot Byron Ferguson and the aircraft that went down in waters off Nirvana Beach 11 days ago, questions linger over whether the incident could have been avoided. Another issue pushed into the forefront, lighting at Family Island airports. Tonight, the former aviation minister is questioning why there would be any dark airports in the Bahamas in 2018. I don't know what the status is now. But all of the airports are All airports had emergency, including just runway strips. The former aviation minister is refuting a claim made in The Punch, a local newspaper that unlit runways caused the crash involving pilot Byron Ferguson. To date, there has still been no sign of Ferguson. However, portions of the six-seater Piper Aztec aircraft have been retrieved by volunteer and Defense Force divers. But could the crash have been avoided? Some question if Ferguson could have successfully landed the plane had he not been directed to continue to LPIA, even after alerting air traffic control that he was experiencing issues. 2002 and 7, there were 18 that were done. And you said when you came back? Came back, there were four that were done. Um, the, the four remaining ones, and then some were repaired because they, they get damaged sometimes during hurricanes and through neglect and all of that. Um, we made a decision and, uh, to uh, not just install, but to um, ensure maintenance, etc. But what has happened with lighting at airports since? When asked for confirmation last week, Aviation Minister Dionisio de Aguilar couldn't confidently say whether all Family Island airports were outfitted with emergency lighting and that he hadn't checked since assuming office 18 months ago. Well, there are 28 airports, so forgive me if I don't know if every single right. one of them has not only lights, but all the lights are working. So uh, I was, uh, I remember being informed by my predecessor that every single airport had emergency lighting. He said his predecessor told said, him yeah, this. Yeah. Well, I mean, in two well, years now, oh, been, hold on now, yeah. you've been there two years and you don't know if you have emergency lighting systems? Come on. I mean, you, you have to ask him. I heard him say, you expect me to know 29 airports? I, I saw his response. Yeah. <laughs> And in asking Monday afternoon whether all Family Island airports are outfitted with emergency lighting, the minister directed us to Milo Butler, the general manager of the airport authority. When we contacted Butler, we were told he had no comment. In 2013, after a tragic incident where three people were killed after a truck was clipped by the wing of a plane as drivers sought to illuminate the runway on Mayaguana for landing, the then aviation minister, Hannah Martin, pledged to ensure all Family Island runways were equipped with emergency lighting. Hannah Martin admitted that while she ensured that all government airports were outfitted with functional emergency lighting during her last stint as aviation minister, there were some airports that may have been left out. I don't think Chubkey was in that. That's a private airport. Now, um, but, but Great Harbor Key? Yes. Well, on the heels of that crash, the Prime Minister has promised to order a full review of the protocols, procedures and agencies involved in search and rescue efforts. Minnis said in a statement, the Byron Ferguson plane crash and the search and rescue operations which followed have become the subject of intense public discussion. I have spoken with Mr. Ferguson's mother and have offered my prayers to her and her family. The civil aviation authorities of the Ministry of Tourism and Aviation have already commenced an investigation. I have instructed that all resources are brought to bear to ensure this investigation is handled properly. Minnis said once completed, experts' reports will be made public and examined by the government to determine whether changes to the country's air disaster response are necessary. Minnis said he will make no comment on the operations until he has received a full report from the Ministry of Tourism and Aviation, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, and other relevant authorities. He added the government will then consider and take any corrective measures that may be indicated by the facts. Well, meanwhile, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force says its search continues. Authorities vow to leave no stone unturned until Ferguson's family has the closure it needs. With more on this, here's Vonnie Tude. We press on regardless of um, the praises or the complaints. Um, we continue to stay focused 
and do what we need to do. Amid intense scrutiny and criticism of search efforts by the Defense Force, three dive teams hit the crash site Sunday, exploring 80 to 100 feet of water in search of pilot Byron Ferguson and the remainder of the aircraft that crashed in waters off Western New Providence over a week ago. Twelve volunteer divers recovered portions of the plane and a document believed to be the flight plan on Thursday. Officers say they recovered additional debris from that area on Thursday afternoon and Friday. Asked whether authorities have any hope of finding Ferguson, Lieutenant Commander Sean Pinder said their efforts will continue in earnest until they can provide closure to the pilot's family. We know that these um, activities and these um, evolutions um, provide some degree of closure um, for family members. Mm -hmm. So from our standpoint, we will exhaust all avenues to ensure that we do all that we could um, to leave no stones unturned to, in terms of um, trying to bring closure to the family as well as trying to see our best that we could uh, recover um, the plane as well as the um, remains. Pinder says while divers concentrated on the east of the area where the tail of the six-seater Piper Aztec was spotted moments after it crashed, their search has extended to Andros and the Berry Islands. Continued search efforts have extended to as far as the Andros and Berry Islands area and so we continue to use our resources to scour all the areas. It doesn't mean that though we have concentrated for the dive ops that we haven't looked at other areas. That is ongoing mm -hmm. until such time as uh, we are able to assist the family in this, this very painful and sometimes uh, trying process. Uh, our efforts are in earnest to assist the families to get to that degree of closure. This was their third dive of the day in hopes of discovering another debris field and authorities say they're willing to go deeper. Um, and then, of course, the plan going forward is to conduct um, a little more intensive dive to whereby we may want to go a little deeper um, to see if there are any other debris fields that are being discovered at deeper depths. Ferguson's family has criticized authorities' search efforts and slammed poor communication. Attorney General Carl Bethel has also slammed the defense force, telling fellow senators last week it is unimaginable that officers would spot part of the plane and leave the site. He called for the sensitization of Marines to ensure that the sense of urgency felt by family members is shared by those involved in search and rescue efforts. This, as authorities said, they will ensure their search is comprehensive. in earnest uh, until the information and or evidence gathered uh, has come to a point where there is nothing else that may be gathered and or uh, there's uh, suggestions and or directives indicating that we ought to do otherwise. Uh, given the level of scrutiny this particular case has uh, had and continues to get, certainly our efforts are focused toward uh, ensuring that our efforts are comprehensive and that we seek to ensure that we aid in the closure of this entire case in an accurate timely and deliberate fashion. The Prime Minister has promised a probe into procedures involved in search and rescue efforts. Reporting for our news, I'm Vonique Tude. All right, thanks, Vonique. Well, two men and a woman were arraigned in the magistrate's court today on allegations of stolen cash from Royal Bank of Canada. Jared Higgs reports. 36-year-old Travis Mackey, seen here in the blue, along with 51-year-old Marvin Gay, pictured in the brown coat, and 37-year-old Kenja King, appeared before Deputy Chief Magistrate Subasola Swain to answer to charges related to hundreds of thousands of dollars in stolen cash from Royal Bank of Canada. Mackey faced the longest list of charges, totaling 38 in all. Among them, he faces four counts of stealing by reason of employment, with prosecutors alleging that between February and May of 2016, Mackey stole $172,758.43 in cash from Royal Bank of Canada, which he had access to by reason of his employment. In addition, Mackey was slapped with 33 counts of falsification of accounts. It is alleged that Mackey, being a business service representative at RBC's East Hill Street branch and with the intent to commit the offense of stealing, 
made false entries into the bank's computer system, purporting to show that Prince Mackie, Marvin Gaye, trading as Tats Rentals, Kenja King, Philippa Watkins, and Ernika Enterprises were entitled to $182,999.43. The bulk of those false entries were made toward Marvin Gaye trading as Tats Rentals, with prosecutors contending that Mackie sought to show him to be entitled to $118,683. Rounding out the charges against Mackey was a single count of laundering the proceeds of criminal conduct. Prosecutors allege that between February and May of 2016, Mackey dealt with the amount of $172,778.93, which in part represented the proceeds of criminal conduct. He pleaded not guilty to all 38 charges. He was represented by attorneys Dion Smith and Ian Cargill. These charges come seven months after Mackey pleaded guilty to 11 counts of falsification of documents and one count of stealing by reason of employment. Now those were the charges laid against Mackey. King also faces several counts, including stealing by reason of employment. 37-year-old Kenja King faced two of those stealing by reason of employment charges, with prosecutors alleging that the Sandilands Village resident stole $28,503 from Royal Bank of Canada, to which she had access to by reason of her employment at the bank. She was further slapped with three counts of falsification of accounts. Police say between April and May of 2016, being a business service representative at the bank and with the intent to commit the offense of stealing, King made false entries into the computer system of Royal Bank of Canada to show Travis Mackey was entitled to $13,000. She was also charged with abetment to commit stealing by reason of employment, laundering the proceeds of criminal conduct and acquisition of the proceeds of criminal conduct. She pleaded not guilty to the charges and was represented by attorney Ian Cargill. 51-year-old Marvin Gaye was also charged with abetment to commit stealing by reason of employment, with prosecutors alleging that the Guadalupe Avenue resident abetted Travis Mackey to steal $118,683 from Royal Bank of Canada. He was also charged with laundering the proceeds of criminal conduct and acquisition of the proceeds of criminal conduct in relation to $118,683. Gay denied the charges and was represented in court by attorney Dion Smith. The deputy chief magistrate lacked the jurisdiction to grant bail and the matter was adjourned until the 7th of December. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Hick. All right, thanks, Jared. Well, the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union is up in arms over a new shift system at the Atlantis Resort and is now threatening to take their current level of industrial action up a notch. Gillian Gray has more. Leaders of the Bahamas Hotel Catered and Allied Workers Union says their over 5,000 members are officially on work to rule. President of the union Darren Woods said their two major grievances is a new shift system and a new 12-point system. We presently have an industrial agreement that says if Darren comes to work at, at, um, late, um, he's either given a verbal warning or a written warning. The thing with the 12 points is if you don't issue me a reprimand at the time of me coming late, yeah. you, 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 you don't have an opportunity after four days to use that particular breach. But if I now assess your point, you're able to hold that breach longer than you, according to our agreement, have a right to. So and then but along with that comes other changes that they would have made. On September 17th, the union met with officials at Atlantis. However, two days later, they received notice that Atlantis officials plan to push ahead with the new changes. The hotel union has filed a trade dispute with the Department of Labor and said they see this as a threat to further negotiations. The reason why we've, we have actually included all of the BHEA properties is because the president of the association is actually the vice president of, of, of the Cove and Reef over at Atlantis. So if they're able to get away with this, he's the person who's in the driver's seat for the negotiation. So if he takes a position, well, this is what I want, and this is what I'm going to take, when it comes to negotiation, it'll be the same thing. Woods said they take this lack of consultation very seriously, as other hotel brands may follow suit. If the government does some things in the government sector, right, the private sector follows suit. Because you, you won't be able to run to the government and say, well, you know, uh, um, employer A did this. Um, because when you get to wherever you go, they say, well, the government did it. Mm -hmm. So we have a right to do it. So in our system, if Atlantis is able to get away with it, mm -hmm. Hilton will then do, go and do it. Malia will then do it. Life at Key, you, 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 you see, because our president has actually endorsed this. The hotel union president said if workers' rights continue to be infringed upon, then soon all their benefits will be lost. The concern for the union is if management is allowed to keep chipping away at benefits on condition, soon they have none. 
This trade dispute follows grievances expressed by a number of other unions. The leadership of the National Congress of Trade Unions, which has 19 affiliate unions, says it seems that all unions are reaching their breaking point. This country is headed in a direction. Yeah. The time has run out. You rest assured. I, and I don't want to say nothing's going to happen before the new year because we don't want those in power to rest on their laurels. Um, but definitely in the new year, you would see um, a lot of things happening along those lines. Now, the Bahamas Hotel Union said the work to rule is just step one in industrial action. And should negotiations not go well, they have no problem going to step two and three, eventually ending in a strike. Reporting for our News, I'm Jillian Gray. Still to come on our news, PMH upgrades its radiology department. Stay tuned for the details.